Under new guidelines, nearly half of all adults in the U.S. will be designated as having high blood pressure. So that can be addressed with medication, with lifestyle changes, or a combination of both. Dr. Wendy Sue Swanson joins us now to talk about preventing high blood pressure um, and how it relates to our kids. Have there been studies that show that kids are suffering from high blood pressure at, at an increasing rate? Well, they are, and there are a couple reasons. So today's large announcement is really the American Heart Association's approach of new guidelines changing the numbers by which we call borderline or stage one hypertension, that high blood pressure where physicians or your medical assistants will want to intervene and do something different. Now, in cadence to this, back in September, the American Academy of Pediatrics also published a huge new set of guidelines identifying new numbers for kids as well, and these are in concert after the age of 13 and up with the numbers that came out today for adults. So to your question, yeah, we think about historically with the old numbers, we found about one to 2% of kids had elevated blood pressure in childhood. There are certain kids that are at higher risk, but with the new numbers and new recent studies, we're finding over three, three and a half percent of kids have elevated blood pressure. And what's concerning about that is that if you have elevated blood pressure as a child, it gradually leads to problems inside your blood vessels that ultimately longstanding in adulthood lead to things like the number one killer, heart attacks or heart disease, stroke, and ultimately end damage to the kidney. Wow. wow. So, so kids with high blood pressure could be looking at long-term problems. They could be looking at long-term problems, and the reason that we want to identify it early is that the new numbers, which are really based on age. So when it comes to adults, you've all probably heard the number 120 over 80. In an ideal world, you want that top number, that systolic blood pressure, 120 or less, and you want that diastolic, that lower number, 80 or less. In children, blood pressure is really the range of normal, has been changed recently because of new research, knowing of long-term effects. But in addition, we want to make sure that pediatricians, family docs, and providers of all are getting kind of a heads up that it's based on those age. Now, in places like where I work, our electronic health record will even kind of calculate the percentage. So I'll find out if a child's blood pressure is at the 90th percentile or at the 95th percentile. And that's when we want to act. And you know, the other thing to really know too is that if your child goes in for a regular well child check, over the age of three, this is no change. We check a blood pressure on every child, but you as a parent, grandparent, or a caregiver should always ask, what is the number, to make sure somebody looks at it. And then if it's abnormal, how we respond today, based on these new guidelines, may be different than how we used to respond. Number one is that about half the kids who have an elevated blood pressure when they come in to see us at the doctor have what's called white coat hypertension. I have that. Yeah, I do do. <laughs> I'm nervous because yeah. you're taking my blood pressure. Yeah. So they see that white coat, they're in the pediatrician's office, where they get shots, right? They're yeah. freaked out. Yeah. So, you know, half of the time that we find an abnormal value, it can be secondary to this white coat hypertension. So the new standard, though, is what's called ambulatory blood pressure monitoring, where we're going to send kids home with devices mm -hmm. that strap onto their arms and take their blood pressure about every 20 or 30 minutes through the day and night to determine is it real or is it not. And then if it is real, we really work on those, you know, kids that are at high risk, kids that are overweight, have a four times likelihood or obese of having high blood pressure. So we work on weight reduction in minimum, you know, and then we work on other high-risk populations to make sure we're screening too. Those kids with sleep disorders or long-standing chronic kidney disease. Mm -hmm. But no question, these guidelines are changing how aggressive pediatricians are going to be and how we can send them home with these new monitoring checks so we get in on it early so that it doesn't follow them through their lifetime and end their life earlier than we would like. Well, it's good to get on it early. Mm -hmm. So the new numbers that came out today changed that threshold number from 140 over 80 to 130 over 80 for adults. 140 over 90, which oh, is when we really intervene for adults. Okay. So 130 over 80 for those 13 and okay. up. But remember, one of the things that's key for you with working with your pediatrician or your family practice doc or whoever, kids, it's always based on age. So each okay. number at each age is different. And pediatricians have a new easy chart to use. And most electronic health records calculate it for the provider. Mm -hmm. So what you can do as a parent, grandparent, or caregiver is just say, hey, what is the blood pressure? Is it in the normal range? And if it isn't, they'll check it one more time in the office that day, and if it's still abnormal, they should be sending them home with one of these ambulatory blood pressure monitors. Okay. We have much more coming up with uh, Dr. John Torres from NBC yep. for adults, you adults in the second half hour of the show. Yep. But for kids, Wendy Sue, thank you. Always good to see you. Thanks.